I do have seven copies. The only warrior we've seen so far today was from Trinity College, and they brought Mech Warrior. So uh, this has been a crazy day, and like you said, I'm excited to see what these guys are going to break out. Uh, Worcester has Druid Mage and Warlock. Ohio State has Mage Paladin Hunter. Yeah, and so this is one of the first lineups I feel like where maybe they're just kind of going back with what has been good. But there we take a look at the College of Worcester across the board. Bitter Suede, the False God, and Extremely Dank. Uh, he's going for Chemistry. A little undecided in the middle there, it looks like, and uh, chemistry over for a bitter sweat as well. I imagine these guys probably have a couple classes together. Oh my goodness gracious! Look at that hat. <laughs> yeah, he's wearing a bathrobe. There's that a, guy has a hat. There's a spider web on the wall. Look out! <laughs> Horse chilling in the middle. Pretty yep. cool. Yep. Pretty cool. Pretty standard. There's Ohio State. Confused Waff, Dick Narby, and Jordan P. The G. Jordan P. The G looks like he's got a couple of tusks there. A little troll cosplay. Mechanical engineering, computer science, and electrical engineering. Still those uh, critical thinking skills. Always something that we have seen in these competitive players. Not a surprise to see them competing on top of going to school full time. And uh, in uniform for them. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. No joking around. No jokesters here. And if the lights go out, he's got that glow stick around his neck to keep them prepared for everything. He got bright and shiny. And that computer is running off of batteries right now. So they've got everything checked. Yeah, that was a little weird. Wait, but what do we do if the internet goes out? That got weird quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't think about that one. <laughs> yeah. We'll just tether it. <laughs> Play from our phones. All right. Well, these guys have more standard lineups, at least as far as their decks go. Uh, but we'll have to see. <laughs> that spider web's still on the wall. <laughs> that guy's still wearing a bathrobe. <laughs> Is that, is that a beanbag chair? Is that Wait, that's a Papasan, right? If I knew what a Papasan was. You know those big chairs that look like a bowl? Yeah, and that is actually, it looks like purple felt. I think it's a Papasan chair. I'm curious what it is. Tweet at me what you think, what kind of chair that is. Bold moves from the bold dudes over at Worcester. Who let that horse play Hearthstone? <laughs> Ohio State, once again, we're seeing Mech Mage, the opener, and we've seen no handlock today either, a deck that's been in almost every single lineup so far. Instead, we're seeing our second Zoo deck of the day. These aggressive decks have been coming out in droves since Grim Patron isn't here to shut down those strategies anymore. We've come full circle. Think back to many, many months ago. I'm thinking around May, maybe even earlier, April, where... Zoo deck was starting to get popular again because of its strengths against Mech Mage. Yeah, it that's true. Early, it has very strong board control tools early game with a lot of it like eggs and uh, abuse of sergeants, things like that. So, uh, but you know, if 
the mechanators can get rolling, it can be pretty rough. But this is <laughs> this is bringing us back. You can see Ohio State contemplated about their turns. I think they're happy to see double knife juggler start though. They have both those checked, and they're the ones with a bigger minion each time. Now the problem with this is if they trade in that mech, they no longer have access to the Goblin Blast Mage activations. But they're the ones with the big bodies on the board right now. Yeah. You don't leave around Knife Juggler. I have been here before. I have disrespected the Knife Juggler at times. You take you take what the game gives you. Because the game giveth and the game taketh away. And if you don't take right now, you give the game an inch, it'll take a mile. Yeah. Wow, I'm scared of the game. <laughs> that guy can be have deadly accuracy with those knives at times. Except for when your opponent's at one, they have an 8-1 Alex Straza, they have an 8-1 Ragnaros, and a 3-5 Sludge Belcher, then every knife's hitting the Sludge Belcher. Yeah. He's wearing a horse mask, man. <laughs> TJ Smith's staring at it the whole time right now. He has yet to look away from the horse mask, I think. That guy last week was wearing an Eagle Scout uniform. I thought he was actually an Eagle Scout, which could still be a possibility, but it might have just been a costume. Because now I'm not even sure if he, he's gauging he's a horse or not. Here's the thing, he's gauging the reaction of Twitch right now. And whichever costume gets the best reaction, that's what he's going as for Halloween. He's got a sweet party coming up, I know it. All right, well, that's a good plan. So they leave the Knife Juggler on board, and it's very unlikely they're going to get punished for it in this situation. But man, is that bold. Yeah. Uh, That's a bold move, Cotton. I mean, I, I think that you're trying, you're trying to dissuade them from trading into that mech form. Um, maybe if that had gone into the Tinker Town, they would have traded into the Tinker Town instead, which would have gave them that Goblin Blast Mage activation. So, yep. Even Mad Scientist in here, so they are running the Mirror Entity package. We've seen a lot of people kind of going more towards, uh, you know, the, a more Mana Worm and Stable Portal Flame Waker build. Uh, they're sticking strictly to their efficiency here. And so this attack, uh, to me, tells me they want to they want to use Mad Scientist and pick off this one one. Zoo is one of those decks where, you know, you haven't played against it a lot lately, but it, you know it's sticking in everyone's mind still. Who's who's had a lot of experience with this? If you leave around their minions, they can buff them up so often with you know abuse of Sergeant, power overwhelming. They couple those with Void Terrors. Suddenly you look at some pretty scary turns. But Big Game Hunter even comes to hand, and that's the full Monty on Implosion right now. Sports. <laughs> that horse has hands! Oh, God! It's Flannel Guy under there. <laughs> so, yeah, the, four full, the full four roll on Implosion uh, is a dangerous prospect to face off against. Ohio State's going to have to be careful about how they play this one. If they had drawn a Clockwork Gnome, you would have seen this turn go lightning fast. But they drew a Mech Warper instead. So the question here is... Should they even play the Mech Warper this turn? On turn six, they have a guaranteed activation that Goblin Blast Mage. Yeah. If they risk that Mech Warper, there's a chance it's not sticking around till next turn. So they have to think out how the next couple turns are going to look. I would say with two Goblin Blast Mages in their hand, they're thinking about the uh, prospect of just playing one of them right now. Yeah. Uh, foregoing the ability on it just to get a 5-4 out and hope to start pushing some damage in. Yeah, it feels like just getting that 5-4 out feels like the better option here. Because they still have that Mech Warper second Goblin Blast Mage next turn Yeah, as a combination. So Do they use the Rusty Horn? They're going to hang on to it for a later turn. Um, but even this spot Wooster, they have the option to Abusive Sergeant, their opponent's 5-4, and then Big Game Hunter it. It's a pretty good combination. Yeah, and so if they're going to do that, I imagine the first thing they're going to do... Oh, well, they can't I think do the it first, anymore. The first thing that I think they're going to do regardless is trade off against this uh, Mad Scientist and try to take advantage of that. So the second thing they have their sights set, set on is the Abusive Sergeant into one of the one ones and then use that to also trade up into the Goblin Blast Mage. If they hang on to the Big Game Hunter, they still have Dr. Boom checked as well. So this is not a surprise to see them hang on to it and utilize this Abusive Sergeant in a different way. But so far, they've been playing their cards right, and they're the ones with a slight amount of card advantage and a slight amount of board position, but still both teams fighting for initiative. Yeah, and they might get blown out here by this Mech Warper and Goblin Blast Mage combination. And then if you're Ohio State, you have to think about, hey, do we trade first, you know, to reduce the chance that this Goblin Blast Mage hits this... Uh
<laughs> oh no, the sad esports. <laughs> That's not esports. <laughs> Ohio State now is going to be able to take initiative of this board. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, uh, Worcester does have more like longevity. They're drawing two cards a turn instead of one. Granted, their hero power doesn't affect the board, but if they can get some high-impact cards over the next couple turns, they might be able to turn around and put it in their favor. But then again, you have to think, Mechmage can sometimes just end the game very quickly if they get burn spells, and we already see a fireball in the hand. Yeah, they're almost guaranteed to get four points of damage out of this pilot of Shredder. Mm -hmm. Four points of face damage, that is. Um, and if Wooster can't check that, it's going to keep coming. So Mirror Entity is going to help try to throw off Wooster's curve a little bit, provide a little bit of disruption, but Wooster's going to need some help on this board. And they can't play that Dr. Boom right now. <laughs> they know that that's a Mirror Entity on the other side of the board. Mechmange does not play secrets other than Mirror Entity. Uh, it, they do, but it's super rare. And so at this point, Wooster can almost guarantee that that is a Mirror Entity. And because of that, you're going to see them play weaker minions first to try to offset the advantage of that card being in play for Ohio State. Yeah, but, I mean, Dark Iron Dwarf is not really a small creature, so it certainly isn't. Uh, they're going to give 8 power over to Ohio State going into the next turn. That would put them at 14. Looking at that fireball, all of a sudden, 8 health is what they have left. So Ohio State now, their real decision here is should they fireball or should they use the piloted shredder? And Wooster's decision right now is what should they write on their whiteboard next? Having a little bit of issues <laughs> so that they can make uh, another statement for themselves. Who gave that guy a whiteboard? <laughs> he was me. <laughs> okay. That makes a lot of sense. They're just like in the room next door. <laughs> oh, jeez. What is he? That horse is, is losing it. All right. So he, the decision's still there. Do they want to fireball? Or do they want to use the front half of the pilot of Treader? One of these has backfire potential immediately. The other one is kind of unforeseen. Uh, consequences. Yeah, protecting those creatures. Uh, Zoo Warlocks don't have a lot of uh, comeback mechanics. <sighs> That's a pitiful draw at the moment. It's Dr. Boom, and you know, this is really the, the final hurrah for them. They're just going to hope that Ohio State doesn't have damage here. <laughs> two damage is what they need. Tinkertown's not two damage. Can provide one, but it, again, Zoo Warlocks don't run heals either most yeah. of the time. And it's almost impossible, if not actually impossible, for them to deal uh, 29 points of damage to this board position. And so Ohio State, they're just sending it upstairs, and they say, you know what, do something. Keep in mind, the Malganus was discarded. Yeah, so that, that's really their mechanism of defense. Now, the Defender of Argus could shut down some of these attacks, but the problem is they're under the clock of just that hero power. Two they have ping. Yeah, they have two turns to end the game. So Ohio State going to take a look at this and go, should we use any of these spare parts right now? Will this help us win the game, or should we just be hanging on to them? Guy on the left is making his argument. Guy on the right is debating. Guy in the middle, taking a drink. Taking a drink. He's utilizing his own spare parts. He's like, I'm controlling the mouse, okay? Hey, yeah, you got, you got to convince me here. <laughs> yeah. All right, fine. Yep, I like the Rusty Horn here. Uh, force your opponents to attack into this in an in ineffective manner. Even make it a little bit more difficult to kill with that reversing switch. Those spare parts not providing a lot of utility at the moment. Wooster draws soul fire. Wow. Maybe a fist of Draxus in this deck. All right, so here we go. I mean, the game has not quite ended just yet. That Boombot is going to pop at the end of turn. It will die. But now the Mage Hero Power can target uh, minions or heroes. Brutal. And the bad thing about Power Woman or Boombot is that you don't get the outcome till after the turn's over. Yeah. So, I think this situation where it's Defender of Argus, and I think you have to start pushing damage because you literally have two turns in the game. So yeah. I would be stunned if this damage did not end up going to the face. The Soulfire will take out uh, this Dark Iron Dwarf. They want as much resilience as they can get. I, I don't think you even go for that Boombot. Well, they're going to try to, to hedge wow. their bet. I mean, maybe they do have a heal in here. You know, it's not impossible. The way they're playing, that would indicate it. They do clear the board, but they're dead in two turns. Well, now they're oh, dead in one turn. Dead. <laughs> Sometimes you just rip frost, but look at the relief on Ohio State. Hey, man, y'all have had this game pretty much locked up. They did 27 with nothing. Yeah. A little bit of overkill. Wooster, uh, not too happy about that one. Ohio State takes game number one with their Mech Mage deck.
once again, we're seeing these aggressive openers really take control of the game. Despite the fact that Zoo, I think, has an advantage in this matchup, they had just too many turns of stumbling. Uh, and in the mid-game, they had to use Doomguard to spot where they really would have loved to have something else available to them. Those two cards they discarded, I think, likely to have impacted this game. Yeah, definitely. And uh, they didn't really have much of a choice, though. Uh, you sort of have to take those r risks there. And especially getting those big cards in your hand early on, sometimes you just have to make that Doomguard play and, and hope that the best-case scenario happens. But also, you, you can't really predict that you'll find yourself in a position where Mulganus is going to be a key card. Sure. Uh, a lot of times, with those fast versus fast decks, Mulganus doesn't even come into play a lot of times because uh, the game ends when like the players start running out of cards around turn 7 or turn 8. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's going to be the mage deck out of the way for Ohio State. They still have Paladin and Hunter remaining. Yeah, and so the, given that it's Mech Mage, I would tend to say they're going to continue to follow this aggressive stance. Hunter, you know, not a very subtle deck. It usually uh, wants to do something to take advantage of the fact it's hero power does two damage a turn. Um, and then the Paladin deck, I mean, we've been seeing Secret Paladin over and over again. It's just yeah. such a strong deck right now. The spike that you get from Mysterious Challenger and the complications it provides for your opponent's combat I think it's just one of those spots where that might be the deck to beat at the moment. It has a super high win rate so far in the Collegiate Hearthstone Championship as well. I believe it's only dropped one game over the course of four weeks of, of the games that we've actually broadcasted. Um, and there was a school that played yesterday. Uh, I know I have it here somewhere, but I can't quite remember. Undefeated with Paladin across all of their matches. Yeah, they so. played yesterday. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, I, I can't quite remember who, but I think a lot of schools are finding themselves in that position where if they did bring Secret Paladin, it's doing them some work. Yeah, I, and, and rightfully so. I mean, Paladin uh, was in a poor spot in the metagame for a long time, and you can find a way to make secrets useful. Let's pull them all out of your deck and put them all into play all at one time <laughs> for six mana and at a 6-6 six, six to your board. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Sometimes. That'll do, pig. College of Wooster, okay. meanwhile, uh, Warlock, Mage, and that's not just any Mage. That is a Freeze Mage. And let me tell Whoa. you what, Freeze Mage for a long time has kind of been shut out of the metagame. One of the decks that performs super well against it happens to be the Warrior class. With Grim Patron hanging around, there were two sides of the Warrior you were on. You were beating up Grim Patron or you were the Grim Patron. And even some of the Grim Patron decks ran shield blocks in there so they didn't always have the same reach. And versus the traditional Control Warrior decks, they would get to armor totals that were nigh unbeatable in yep. almost every single time you were playing Freeze Mage. With Grim Patron being nerfed, it's unlikely that we're going to be seeing quite as many Control Warriors early on, I'd say. And so because of that, this deck, I think, has a nice spot in the uh, in the meta right now. Yeah, I actually thought the same thing earlier today when I queued up Freeze Mage on ladder. I proceeded to lose on turn 5 to a Face Hunter. And then I deleted the deck. <laughs> That's actually a good matchup, too. Uh, sometimes Face Hunter just does Face Hunter things, and there's nothing you can do. Well, that's Hearthstone. That's Hearthstone. Small sample size. One game. Can't draw conclusions from that. I don't know. I think one instance of something is usually enough to draw complete judgments about people's characters, overall win rates, um, you know, outcomes of, of, of topics that typically would require heavy data science behind them. Kappa. <laughs> No Kappa. <laughs> Whoa! And <laughs> Wooster! Oh, man. <laughs> Too bad they don't have a kidnapper. I wonder what he was reeling in pain. To I know. <laughs> to the kidnapper. <laughs> like, nobody who's watching has been listening to, like, all of the 12 yeah. rounds that we've been fucked at, or whatever it is. Oh, jeez. Well, that's a sick curve from Ohio State. Can yep. it be enough to take out a Freeze Mage, though? Well, so far, it's looking like, yeah, I mean, Freeze Mage is... You know, the works are pretty gummed up at this point. If they draw a Frost Nova, maybe they can turn something around with that Doomsayer. They might even Doomsayer this turn. Sure. Now, here's the thing. This muster for battle, if it hits twice, they can clear it. Because they have the weapon, so they'll have five damage guaranteed. Is Ohio State willing to risk that? That's a 50-50. There's a... I mean, no, it's not. It's It's less. Because they have three shots and they needed to hit twice. Yeah, it's a 50-50. Everything's a 50-50. Either happens or it doesn't. <laughs> TJ's major is mathematics. <laughs> Statistical analysis. Ohio State chooses to not risk it here. And, and frankly, I'd have to agree with you. Their hand is so strong at the moment. Ah, it would have hit. 
their hand is so strong at the moment that I don't think they have to uh, take that major of a risk. They still end up with some power on the board. They get blessed by this Avenge afterwards. They have Piloted Shredder going into turn four as well as Mustard for ah, Battle on turn five. the Doomsayer triggers on the next turn. Yes. And so uh, this, this sequencing from them, actually pretty darn good. This situation might even have been better for them. Yeah. Uh, even th if they had been able to kill off the Doomsayer. Right. Because, because now they're just... I mean, I don't want to say it is better, but it could have turned out better. That's that's really the point of getting it. Here. Now they still have the muster for battle. Yeah. They didn't take the risk. They went for a calculated play, and they are rewarded. Tough call here, though. I mean, Pilot Shredder are taking that Blood Mage. Blood Mage is a scary minion to leave around, almost regardless yeah. of what deck it's playing in. Yeah, I, I mean, they do have a way to deal with it now while still pushing the four damage to face by using the muster for battle. And they have a way to still fill out their curve by using the Avenge. One time ever, I played against a Hunter who played a Blood Mage against me. And I went, what on earth? And I just attacked him and played my minion and said, go. He multi-shots my two four health guys, then Hunter's marks my Druid of the Claw. And I was like, well, I feel foolish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now that situation won't be happening here. Wooster cannot take advantage of the Blood Mage at the moment. So it's just going to be picking up a card. I like Ohio State's play so far. Just be relentlessly aggressive. That's the way that you oftentimes have to try to beat this Freeze Mage deck. It dedicates a lot of resources to playing a defensive game. And so because of that, you want pressure, 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 and hope they don't have the right tools. When they don't have the right tools, you can easily run away with the game. The problem is when they do have the right tools, oftentimes you feel foolish not playing a little bit more conservatively in some spots. Yeah. Well, Iron Beak Owl picked up, uh, but I'm not sure if they... They have seen one Doomsayer. Doomsayer is usually the, the primary owl target because you want to protect the board that you have. Uh, but Acolyte can, you know, Acolyte could be the thing that... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what the heck was that? Beautiful. <laughs> Shout out to the production team. <laughs> I was staring right at that spot. <laughs> <laughs> they knew, they could see it in your eyes. Oh jeez. They could see it in his too. I don't even know what point I was trying to make. Yeah, we're talking about Iron Beak Owl with uh, Doomsayer. And that being the primary target. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, <laughs> that sounds true. like a good point. You know, what you usually want to do is, uh, you know, Freeze Mage oftentimes is looking for spots where they can freeze your board, play a Doomsayer, and since you can't attack it, it will live so often. Mm -hmm. The Iron Beak Owl will shut off that effect that makes it destroy everything. But there's another thing you can do with, with uh, Iron Beak Owl in this matchup. If you have a frozen minion, you can silence that frozen minion and pull that freeze off and attack with it. Yeah. And that's a very valuable thing to have sometimes in this matchup. In Ohio State, they're going to continue to play conservative in this spot. They want this pilot and shredder to be loaded up. But is Wooster going to fall for that? Do they know that this is an Avenge? Do they have any way to know that this is an Avenge? Well, they're about to hit, they're about to know right now. <laughs> hey guys, it's an Avenge. <laughs> hey guys, it's Avenge. <laughs> well, a seven Look five. Out! <laughs> A 7-5 Piloted Shredder is not something that you, you said earlier you could use the Owl to silence because it brings it down to a 4 attack. Yeah, you can use it to push, push lethal, but... Oh, wow, look You're at this. You're just going to big game hunter it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Ice Lance actually works quite effectively in this situation. And look at all this freeze that Worcester has. That draw is not what they wanted to see at the moment. Typically in this deck, you don't really want to draw any secrets. You want them all to be pulled out with Mysterious Challenger. Well, having secrets early can sometimes be a good thing. It certainly can. Uh, and that's really the benefit of the deck is you can utilize them to good effect. But ideally, you'd like to be drawing all of your action and having the Mysterious Challenger thin your deck of those yeah. draws and increase your draw density. Draw the, yeah. the real powerhouse cards in the deck. Yeah, um, for sure. But the bigger story here is that Wooster has fended off a lot of this pressure. And sure, they're staring down 13 points of power right now, but they have plenty of ways to continue to stall this board and try to find the right tools. Yeah, and uh, this Noble Sacrifice that's that's been pulled here will give them a card. There goes their pens. pens. Really doesn't affect them too much. Uh, since they they can control... Oh, wow, they're... Oh, Frost Nova, yeah. Yeah, I th here's the thing. I don't think they need to couple the Frost Nova with the Doomsayer in this turn. I think they have plenty of time to work with. Yeah, and they can continue to use these Acolytes to draw cards. They're going to proc the uh, Noble Sacrifice with the low health Acolyte of Pain. Be able to draw more cards and freeze the board. This is uh, a pretty good position with two Blizzards to back this up, plus a Flame Strike to back this up. It this looks like they're going to go... Yeah, it looks like they're going to go for Ping and Frost Nova, and I like this play. Um, 
you know, they're still rolling into turn eight. They still have access to Blizzard plus Doomsday the turn afterwards. Yeah. Blizzard's still going to freeze the board, but now they're, but now they're just drawing extra cards at this point. It's gotten too hot in there. The man behind the mask. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you can only keep those things on for so long, and they <laughs> immediately give them here. Take this. They're like, "Come on, man! Hydrate! You you lost the bet. You had to wear the horse head the entire time." Yeah. <laughs> well, this could be one of those situations where you use the owl to push through. Uh, granted, oh nope. Well, this this does push through in a different way too. I mean, Mad Scientist is gonna be pulling Ice Block out of this deck. It's going to be pulling Ice Berry out of here. Of course, Ice Block going to protect you if you take lethal. Instead, you don't take that lethal damage that turn. Yeah. And also, Ice Berry is going to give them eight points of health. So they yeah. keep that in the deck. Maybe Wooster just draws that. They still want to be drawing their action cards. And look at the setup right now. Wooster has to do something about this. Now, Ohio State doesn't know they have Blizzard and Doomsday in this situation. Um, but I think this was really the way that you're supposed to tackle this turn. Hope that your opponent can't continue to freeze you and that you just have an open shot against them. I think they played to their outs this game. And that it's just a matter of Wooster having so much time that they have all the answers. Yeah. It's going to be really tough, I think. Ohio State is running out of resources here. They do have second Mysterious Challenger. And actually, Dr. Boom is one of the best cards against Freeze Mage. Uh, just because even if it gets frozen and killed off, you still get the effect from the Boom Bots. And if you put, can put the, the Freeze Mage low enough, the Boo Bots will proc uh, from the Doomsayer on their own turn. Yeah, but this is the you. sad, sad turn that Ohio State didn't want, where the Doomsayer says goodbye. Sports wiped away. No Doomsayers left, though. Yeah. I, here's the thing. They have Alex Straza, and they have Burn behind it. They have more freeze effects. They have a Flame Strike. I think Wooster has all the tools to go ahead and start trying to end this game. Yeah. They're going to go with Emperor Thoris on first, though, and the Ice Barrier. They want to be as conservative as they possibly can in this spot. Yeah. Well, bringing down an Ice Lance to zero mana, bringing down an Archmage Antonidas to six mana, these are really big deals. It allows them to really build into that burn uh, very effectively. Uh, Ice Lance can be basically turned into a Fireball for free at this point, and just the utility of freezing becomes sort of just like a bonus at this stage. Dr. Boom looks like it is going to be played, so that's a tough minion to deal with, but like you said, Worcester has so many resources at their disposal. Let's continue to draw this game. Yep, so Ice Barry gets procs. They don't have an Ice Block in play, though. So, is this enough damage to start prompting more AoE spells from Worcester? You know, that's really the question here. I would say with Alex Straza, um, I can see it go either way. They could still be a little bit more aggressive here. You know, say they play Alex Straza, attack for five, Ice Lance, that Dr. Boom, they're not even close to dying. They're at 21 right now. 21, and if you do freeze that Dr. Boom, you're only staring at four, six. five, six damage on yeah. the board. What's the maximum that a, a Sister Paladin can do from hand? Probably True Silver Blessing of Kings. Yeah, it's usually plus eight. Yeah, plus eight. So, uh, six plus eight, 14. Not quite at 21. Now, here's the thing. They did see an Iron Beak Owl. So if their opponent drew the perfect card and had the perfect hand already, they could deal just enough. So they're going to, once again, take an extremely conservative route with this one. Emperor Thorson, four damage is not enough to kill him, so he's sticking around for another turn. And if we've been doing our math correctly, that is a noble sacrifice. Yes, it is. So they're so, going to hang on this Emperor and get the extra discount. Yeah, they realize, they do the calculations. Ooh, double muster for battle. They've done the math. Yeah. They know the answers. Yeah, I think they have to just try to do whatever they can to take care of this. Taking this Emperor Thoris off the board. Threat. Yep. And here's the thing. Wooster is out of freeze effects at the moment. But second Mysterious Challenger only grabbed one secret. All right. So Alex draws the ice block. I think you're feeling pretty darn safe behind that. Yeah. But they don't have the, actually the damage to finish afterwards. That's it. You can Archmage Antonidas. Ice, ice block. block. Uh, fireball? Do you have enough? Do you have enough mana to fireball? Yeah, you do. Three times next turn? No, because you're gonna two of your fireballs are gonna cost four mana. Well, you can uh, fire start fireballing off the threats. Is that his game plan though? I mean, he could just if that's his game plan, he's just flame strike, right? Archimedes did tonight. Is flame strike? No, I think just flame strike and use the fireballs to clear. Sure. Yeah, I think that's what they're gonna go for. Wooster has played so conservative this game that I'd be almost stunned if they didn't continue to play conservative. Yeah. Now it's a double sacrifice still. 
There's the ping, and then Fireball's gonna take out this mysterious challenger. Ohio State is down to pits on the board. Yeah. Have you ever seen a rich old guy with all the money fight a young guy who's only got nothing left? Look at this, they're gonna make use of the Shadow Boxer. They could do that. That's, a, that's true, the heal from True Silver Champion will proc that. Yeah. But that means they have to override their 1-1 weapon, and all the damage that they can get matters at this point. Yeah. I think at this point, you just shove it all in. You, you go Buster for battle, get your three guys, your True Silver Champion, start swinging away, and just hope for the best at this point. I mean, everything is, you know, you're... You're down to almost nothing left at this point. Yeah. You just got to hope for the right cards. Yeah. But here's the thing. Wooster's used to Frost Novas. They've used Blizzards. They've used a Flame Strike. You haven't seen Alex Straza yet. You know, you're thinking maybe they don't have it just yet. Maybe they can't deliver that lethal blow. It's a long shot. When a long shot's all you got. Is that a song? Uh, it should be. It's usually a song. Whenever you drop like a one, I'm just like I'm three like, weeks later, I'm just like a multi-millionaire like <laughs> musician. And they're like, yeah, man, he's just great. He's just absolute brilliance. He's a genius when you put him behind the mic. <laughs> With a long shot's all you got. By Nathan, that's admirable some more. Here it is, folks. And, like, they have to play the, the clap track. Oh, geez. Well, they went for it. Getting that shadow boxer damage in, but... That's when Taylor Swift covers it and just crushes me on the <laughs> album sales. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Booster, they do require your assistance for that Archmage. There's Basically going to close out the game. Yeah, I and mean, here's here's the Fireballs afterwards, too. They may even choose to protect their Archmage. That's, I'm not even discounting that as a possibility. Nope. They say, let's go. You got nothing left, Ohio State. What you got? We got three of the con Fireballs. Well, Tyrion. Well, actually, I, I still think it's just there's no way for them to kill off Archimedes and Tinnitus, so they can't block the block. Is there anything they can pop the block this turn? Is there anything they can draw? What if they drew Keys and Mystic? If they have that in their deck, yes, they could. Actually, I don't even think so. No, they could. Yeah, it's steal the ice block. Yeah, if Keys on Mystic is their next card, then that's the only possible way that they could. Uh, mount to come back. But block is, is still up. Here's the thing. Freeze Mage can never worry about keys and missing. They just have to go. Yeah. And here we go. Wooster says two more fireballs. Ohio State, you got one card left. Yeah. And judging by the expressions on Ohio State's face, I don't think they have a Kazan Mystic in their deck. <laughs> yeah, we'll you said see. that necklace glow stick gave you power. <laughs> yeah, no way to fend off the pressure here, Ohio State. We're going to game number three in a tied series, boys. Yeah, and I think Worcester actually last week brought Freeze Mage as well. Uh, I did mention that there was a Freeze Mage brought last week, and I believe it was Worcester. Actually have the decks here. But I don't have time to look at it. Yeah, that's going to do it. Because we're about to go into game three. You see the what horse says is gone. When you can actually see the yeah. buttons you're clicking, it makes a big impact. Yeah, it's amazing. That, I can't believe that guy put up such a fight game one without being able to see the cards. Yeah. Maybe they were directing him a little bit. They're like, hey, mouse just a little bit to the left, up a little bit. And he's like in the horse. He's like, guys, I can't see. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> Wooster does tie it up one to one. Ohio State still has Paladin Hunter remaining. Uh, Wooster still has that zoo deck that we saw earlier. Uh, plus a Druid deck that we've yet to see. Which the Druid decks at this point, you know, we've seen them largely contain the same block of cards. Yeah. Their cards are just so powerful that it's hard to not play them. You know, outside of those very aggressive Druid builds that we've been seeing kind of creep up on ladder with Leopard Gnomes and Knife Jugglers, um, that deck is pretty set in stone in the direction it wants to take. Or Wild said, Walkers. Yeah, or Wild Walkers. We, we saw earlier. We did see that deck uh, drop the game it played. Um, but that was certainly something to take notice of. Yeah. It actually dropped the game it played in spectacular fashion with Runner, oh, Abusive Sergeant, Quick Shot into Eaglehorn Bow. It so. almost feels like they deserved that game. <laughs> <laughs> almost. Almost. Not quite. Face Hunter's always there to keep those decks in check. You, you think you're being creative, you think you're being innovative, and then you play against the Face Hunter, and it all comes crashing down. So is that Face Hunter guy. Yeah. Me, personally, I have never played Face Hunter, ever. I did not get a Golden Hunter as my first class. <laughs> I did not get it in, like, week number two. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right, well, we're jumping into... Uh, Paladin versus... Yeah, it's Paladin versus Druid. Oh, the horse that's coming back. Yeah. Well, 2-1 Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yep, and that's a lot of ramp early on for Wor Worcester. Feels like a good curve, and ew. Yep, the that is the thing from Ohio State. Here's the thing, Blessing Hammer. I'm sorry, Blessing, Blessing Hammer. Blessing Kings, great card. Cog Hammer, great card. But you got to have minions in play for these to work. Yeah. Otherwise, that Blessing Kings has no targets except for your opponents, and the Cog Hammer doesn't grant you the taunt in the Divine Shield on that minion. Mm -hmm. um, so Ohio State's going to have to figure out what's the best way to balance these coming turns. You know, because right now they're kind of relying on their next two draws to to get set up. <laughs> what is he doing? He's just having a good time, man. Yeah. He's just playing Hearthstone. <laughs> this is what I look like when I'm in my room by myself playing Hearthstone. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, you guys wish I was streaming right now. Yeah. I don't own one of those hats, though. I'm going to have to go pick one of those up. Ohio State actually looks a little bit defeated here. This hand, it, it, I mean, it really is just rough. He's petting him. Yep. Yeah. That's this is what this this is what this broadcast <laughs> this, has. This come. is the direction it's taken. Yeah. Turn one noble sacrifice. I think it's unlikely Whoa. Wooster tre checks for this on turn one, especially given their hand. They have so much ramp available, but Ohio State's going to have to find a minion, and they're going to have to find one quick. Shield of Minibot would be the best. And speak of the devil, there it is. I all year long I've been calling the card so great. Nobody cares who was until he put on the mat. Nobody, <laughs> cares who nope. he was. Nobody cares who I was until I put on the mask. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh. I was wondering which would break first. <laughs> it took him like three hours to write that. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, no, no, no. He's no. like, what's the quote? <laughs> Let me Google this real quick. <laughs> Well, Double Darnassus Aspirant is still a pretty intimidating board to be staring down. Even if you have a Shield of Mini Bot and a Cog Hammer. Yeah, can't quite take out both of these, uh, but the Cog Hammer certainly providing uh, a bit of leverage in this position. You know, it's it's almost certain they'll end up in a, in a favorable position in the coming turns. Now, the problem with it is the other two cards in their hand are Double Sacrifice and Redemption. So how do they take advantage of the fact that they can get this advantage? And that's really the big story I'm seeing here. Yeah. They're like, do we want to kill that 2 3 1 or the 2 1 1 and knock the 2 3 down to a 2 1? Well, they've done the math. It does the same matter. outcome. <laughs> and they go to the face. I was wrong. Nope. Yeah, got to take at least one out because uh, running the risk of your opponent playing like a Druid of the Claw is way too high because then their Darnassus Aspirant just stay up. And unless you have a Consecrate, you're not getting through that. And Worcester now, uh, their turn before this was pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, it really was, but now it's like, you know, what do you do? This is kind of an awkward position to be in. And so I look at this and I wonder, you know, does the Savage Combatant really change this? I think Pilot and Shredder still the best minion you can play. Oh, wow. They're, They're looking at go wild, growth. wild Growth. Interesting. That's bold. So this play tells me that they want to knock off this Shield and Minibot uh, right away. They don't want Blessing of Kings to be a big factor. Uh, they want to make sure they maintain control. You know, even to the face of something like Redemption, maybe they can get a comeback by redeeming that, that Shield and Minibot and just having those extra bodies around. Wild State oh draws my dead goodness. again. Whew, this is a tough spot, and Wooster, you know, they're still rolling into a five-mana turn here. <laughs> what do you do to play all three secrets? I, I think, I think crazy. Noble Sacrifice Avenge and Token is a little bit better. Yeah, because then at least you can have a board mm. presence next turn if Worcester decides to trade into uh, yeah. that 1-1. One, one. Redemption feels like uh, you can have a lot better timing on that card. Here's the, here's the only thing I think Ohio State really ha could have going for them in a position like this. It's that Worcester may interpret this as a repentance. And if that's the case, does it change the way they play their minions? That's really their only hope. So Wooster just happens to have Pilot Shredder. So they're not fearing anything in Ohio State. Um, well, they do ha now have some, some gas in the tank. But they already have three <laughs> secrets down. <laughs> They've been through a lot of their secrets yeah. already. So a lot of this is going to co come down to whether or not Wooster, you know, pops any of these secrets this turn. Yeah. I think you just play the Redemption. Let's go. Five upstairs. Yeah, Redemption is basically going to be like a one-mana 2-1 one yeah, this they're gonna, stage. They're going to hang on to it still. What they're hoping for is that this tells me they have a second copy of Redemption in their deck, and they're hoping that uh, they can get that out of the way with the Mysterious Challenger. Yeah. Oh, look at this Keeper of the Grove. This is going to be brutal. 
Yeah, when you can pull uh, the old seven power off the board for four mana. Yeah. This is this is tough stuff. Yeah, and even though Mysterious Challenger is going to come down on turn six for Ohio State, they might just be a little bit too far behind to pull it back. That's the thing we were talking about earlier. The way that you fight against Mysterious Challenger is you get your board position set up ahead of time. And yeah. So when that's the case, you can take away a lot of the options uh, and a lot of just the disruption mechanic that Mysterious Challenger provides. So we're going to check the pilot shredder first. It's one four, not a big deal for them. And there's four secrets. Now, is the Dr. Boom going to be enough to end this game? That's the question I'm asking myself at the moment, because Wooster is still going to be able to, to kind of fight through this board position. Yeah. So we've been through um, two Noble Sacrifices and one Avenge, right? Is that correct? Both Noble Sacrifices? Because there's only four secrets on the board right now. Yeah. So we have Repentance. Maybe there's just one Redemption. I don't know if we've been through the second Noble Sacrifice. Um. No, the second double sacrifice hasn't been gotten through. That was the first one that was sitting there. All right, time, so wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So that's probably just one redemption in their deck. So that's that fifth secret that's we missing. have been through both double sacrifice. Oh, okay, because well, they played the one in turn one. That's what it was. Dernas's aspirant checked that turn one uh, double sacrifice. That's what it was. Okay, so okay. they run two redemptions. Yeah, I mean that, well, that's why they held on yeah. to it is because they run two redemptions. Yeah, yeah. So Force nature is going to be the play here. They get the word. There's no double sacrifice. And so why not take out this Mysterious Challenger? They do lose that combo potential, but again, they're kind of fighting more of an attrition battle right now. Yeah. The question is, will they have a way to deal with the Doctor Boom? Someone called for the Doctor. Did you see the, the, the windmill motion that Ohio State made? No. He picked his hand up and he like windmilled it over the top and acted like he was slamming the Doctor Boom Dude. down. Nice. Yeah! Dunk on him! That was a, a seven. Was he, What was he saying? Dr. Seven? I think he was just... I think he was dunking on him. Okay. Ah, <laughs> got him! <laughs> well, uh, Worcester has a Dr. Boom of their own, but they do know that one of these secrets is Repentance. Yeah, and that's a, that's a big problem for them at the moment. Yeah, so Repentance... Uh, Avenge. Avenge and Competitive Spirit. Um, Could be Competitive Spirit, yeah. Actually... I think it has to be Competitive yeah. Spirit. Can't be eye for an eye. Nope, because they check with the one damage. Well, I was thinking just because nobody plays that card. <laughs> <laughs> so they're yeah. going for swipe here. There's the Avenge. Yikes! That Dr. Boom is huge! It's definitely big at the moment, but you know, you gotta take what you can get. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's seven damage to the face. And this Dr. Boom's gonna have eleven attack. All of a sudden, if they draw into a true silver champion, they win the game. Or Blessing of Kings. Blessing of Kings will end it too. Or Blessing of Kings. Ah, the suspense! The worst card in the deck! <laughs> ah! Well, I mean, these, this juggle can still be a big deal. How are they going to take this Dr. Boom out? I don't know, man. That one, face. Well, it well probably that took out hit the 5-1. Yeah, yeah, that did. hit the 5-1 for sure. They're like, yeah, another <laughs> point of damage to face! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think there's any way that Worcester comes back from this one. I mean, this is the strength of Secret Paladin. There was a dominating board position for Worcester. Mysterious Challenger comes out with nearly nothing in the hand, and they still won. Yeah, Worcester. The, the horse mask is off. Nothing. They were doomed as soon as he took that off. As soon as he put it on, rather. <laughs> sure, whatever yeah. way you want to wow, look at Wow, look it. at Ohio State. They can't believe they won that one. Honestly, it's tough for me to believe it, too. I mean, like you said, Worcester... Had initiative on board. It looked like they had the options to take care of, of what was thrown at them. But just a couple of secrets disrupting the way the combat works yeah. and drawing that Dr. Boom right when they needed it was the big difference in this game. Without that Dr. Boom draw, I'm not sure they had the gas left to, to take care of this one. Yeah. and you know, Maybe maybe Tyrion could have gotten it done, but I don't know. I mean, there's only a couple draws in the deck. Yeah. It's tough. As the strength of the deck, it's supposed to, you know, curve out into that. You, you talked about earlier how Mysterious Challenger thins the deck. Um, but I guess the Doctor Boom was drawn before the Mysterious Challenger, so not really relevant. Well, they'd already drawn their secrets at that point, so it yeah. didn't really matter that much. <laughs> uh, they were rewarded for having such a poor draw early on with that Doctor Boom, with the Mysterious Challenger into Doctor Boom. But the only deck that Ohio City has left is Hunter. So Hunter, it feels like it's in a good spot right now. 
and we've seen a lot of aggressive hunters today. I think both the hunters deck decks we saw today were the more aggressive hunters. So Worcester, with Zoo and Druid remaining, they're going to have to have some pretty solid games here if they're going to want to come back in this one and take out Ohio State. It's been a while since I've seen the Zoo versus Hunter matchup. And if I recall correctly, Zoo has a slight edge in that matchup, unless it's like an explosive trap build. Yeah. Now, the difference there is that since then, like, Imp Gang Boss has been added to the format. This is, like, how long it's been. It's like Imp Gang Boss has rotated into the format somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure exactly how much pressure they can get out versus a Hunter and really and really try to apply to them. And at the same time, most of the Hunters have swapped over to a Freezing Trap style of play where they want to seize tempo, get a pile of Treader on board, and then take advantage of the fact that they can get initiative for pretty cheap. Yeah. So, you know, we, we see that right now it looks like a pretty typical Hunter build. But we've also seen, wow, that's a player in there. We've also seen, you know, Ram Wrangler builds. Uh, we've seen people dedicated to super high-end game of, uh, of Hunters in this event. Well, that looks like a mid-range Hunter. Yeah, I would venture to say so as well. The player, uh, you know, equipped in here to make sure they can try to check a Mysterious Challenger turns a little bit better. In my experience, that's still not a very effective way to fight it. But it's better than nothing, I suppose. Yeah. But their curve is so strong at the moment. Mad Scientist in the Piloted Treader is about one of the best starts you're going to get. You know, maybe they look at this hand and they go, Web Spinner Flare is the play here. Um, but my sight's set on that Piloted Treader. Yeah, but uh, look at Worcester. They have a really solid curve as well uh, with, you know, that turn two wild growth into turn three Shredder. And they're going to be able to innovate out the turn four Ancient of Lore if they so choose to sort of refill that hand that they used on ramp early on in the game. Yeah, I think a lot of this is going to depend on what they see from Ohio State. You know, they, they even have options to, for removal in their hand very yeah. early on, too. Yeah, wow. Leox, a great role in this position, I think. Yeah, but you look at it, you're like, well, that means he's going to proc the Freezing Trap with whatever comes out of the Pilot of Shredder. Sure, but you've taken care of a Pilot of Shredder with just a Mad Scientist. Not a bad deal. I actually don't know for sure that that's Freezing Trap. That's true as well. We did see Freezing Trap uh, was drawn early on. Okay, well, it is Freezing Trap, okay. We now know for sure it's Freezing Trap. We now know for sure that's Freezing Trap. But a super strong follow-up to this one. You know, they can challenge this board in a number of ways. Wooster, really with all the options in Ohio State, gonna have to just rely on their curve to get the job done in the meantime. Yeah, which is a tough thing to do. Uh, even though Liak is great when you already have a board presence, uh, when it's just kind of sitting there on an empty board, it's. He's lonely. He's, he's very lonely. He's like shouting for his bros, come on! Yeah. Pirate, Pirate Druid. <laughs> That's very poor penmanship. Few people know that uh, that TJ is also one of the few penmans in the world under the apprenticeship of uh, the youngest remaining one alive at 73 years old. <laughs> <laughs> the art of calligraphy. I watched a documentary about that the other day, dude. I don't even know why There's I watched it. There's a whole it. documentary about the art of calligraphy. Uh, it was penmanship. There's only a few of them left in the world. It's like yeah. a dying art. It's pretty cool. Well, Trog he's... says he's no stupid, but he dies to just a wrath. Yeah. And that sounds pretty stupid to me. <laughs> Booster takes initiative is the is the big thing here, though. And Ohio State, yeah, they do have things to play, but when you fall behind against a Druid or a Hunter, it's really tough for you to come back in it. Now, one of the cards that can climb you back in it is Eagle Horn Bow. You know, when you're still fighting and, and all the minions are kind of in combat, uh, this provides you just that little bit of leverage that maybe you can use to get back in the game. Ooh. Yeah, and they, they are curving out into a Dr. Boom next turn. So, if that Dr. Boom can stick and, you know, they can do some work with that, get some face damage in. Right now, they haven't done a single point of damage to Worcester. Yeah, which is part of the big story here. I mean, Hunters does have to leverage uh, its advantage at some point, and usually does that via damage. In this situation, that damage is not anywhere in sight. And Wooster, with, again, now they're starting to build up even more options at this point. So Dr. Boom is going to have to carry a lot of weight in this situation. With Azure Drake and Swipe, I don't know if they can get this done. So the question here now to me is, do they use this Eagle Horn bow to take out this 5-5, or do they want to start pressuring right away? Uh, that 5-5 can be pretty threatening, especially since they're they're actually pretty low. They attack into this 5-5, all of a sudden they're down to 16 health. So that's a lot of damage that Ohio State's taken early on in the game, and um, they realize that Dr. Boom. Boom is going to be their most powerful threat. They have to hope that Worcester doesn't have a BGH. 
which they don't. And the quality of hand forcer is actually not that great. Yeah, they can swipe, but in order to take out the... Well, they can swipe, uh, then Savage Combatant, and then Hero Power, but they're taking a lot of damage in that case. Yeah, that, well, that's the benefit of being at such a high life total, is that the damage when your opponent's got this few cards can oftentimes be inconsequential. So yeah, dealt five damage, which is the average about for Boombots. Uh, they go to 19, but they clear the Dr. Boom off the board. They have initiative at the moment, uh, or the, rather, they have the board presence at the moment. In Ohio State, at 15 life, and with this few resources, where do they go? They need a big draw right here. That's a big draw. Yeah, it certainly is. Now, here's the thing that is being contested uh, by the Savage Combatant. So what's the follow-up for Wooster? I mean, we've we've been seeing them fight for the board now for seven turns. This is, this is pretty darn rare. Mm -hmm. Usually, you see someone with an advantage and the other guy fighting from behind, but so far, they've been going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, so let's say they play the Savannah High Main here, along with something like the Web Spinner. Which you can something hero like the Web Spinner, as opposed to something like the Unleash the Hounds. Yeah, yeah. Let's say they play something like Savannah High Main with the Web Spinner. <laughs> the something like was <laughs> slightly late. I just wanted to call you out. I'm a, I'm a jerk. I'm sorry. I'm so sad. <laughs> Someone could be a horse mask. They're gonna choose a flare. I am shocked by that. Say they play something like the Flare with their top deck card, Iron Beak Owl, and Web Spinner. Yeah. Say they play something like the Iron Beak Owl. I gotcha. That, that's it. That's the end. I'm following. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Darnassus Aspirate's not that great of a draw this late in the game. Uh, let's see what they pick up from the Azure Drake. It is going to be a big game it's hunter. a little bit late. Yeah. But, Took a little bit too much time hiding out in the woods. Yeah. Lining up his mark. But Worcester can, uh, they have plenty of health to work with. They have plenty of damage to work with, too. Ohio State has to take care of the damage side of things. And this is why I'm kind of shocked they didn't play the Savannah High Main. It's because now the Savage Combatant's free to just attack your face. Yeah. When you're at 15, 5 damage is a ton of damage. When you're at 35 damage is a ton of damage. At all stages in the game, we can <laughs> confidently <laughs> conclude that 5 damage is a lot of damage. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's ineffective at the moment! <laughs> Web Spinner uses King Crush Attack. <laughs> it's ineffective. <laughs> well, it could be effective next turn, but they still, even with the King Crush draw, are in a poor position in this game. And even just something like a Savage Roar draw will end the game. Or swipe. Yeah, they need four points of damage. That's it. They actually only need three because they have the hero power. Yeah. They don't have access to it this turn, though, so the fight continues. Here's the thing. Is Wooster ever worried about damage output from Ohio State? Right now they have five on board. So unless they had double kill command and they left a beast around, they're still in a fantastic position That's with this swipe. Game. And they go for they go for the dig here. They find that swipe. We are going to game number five. First game five of the day. Worcester gives a little bit of a fist pump. Yeah. I'm just saying, TJ, we're 2 0 without starting games, the horse head. We are 0 2 and we're starting games, the <laughs> horse head. I think horse head stays off for this game. Yeah. I think so. Maybe they're they're seeing the patterns as well. What majors are these guys? Is there a pattern recognition major? <laughs> it says it right here pattern recognition <laughs> is his major. Okay. He's good. <laughs> Not chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's. Uh, Worcester has Warlock remaining, so it is the Zoo Warlock, I believe. Yep. And Ohio State does still have that mid-range Hunter remaining. So it's a matchup that we don't see very often anymore. It's been a long time since we've seen it, and one of the reasons it's been so long is because with Grim Patron being such a big part of the metagame, uh, all the Warlock builds were tending to go for, for Handlock, try to yeah. build up a, a very large board position, have the right AoE to clear out some maybe tricky situations they get into, and apply a lot of pressure with their effective ramp that they get into stuff like Mountain Giant, Twilight Drake, uh, etc. And so because of that, Zoo just has not been a very viable strategy. In addition to that, Zoo is also pretty poor against Grim Patron. Yeah. So with that out of the picture, taking the aggressive stance may be the right direction. <laughs> Praying to the gods at the moment, hoping they get it done. Ohio State's going to be pitching all three of these cards. Wooster, uh, decent curve so far, but that power overwhelming and soulfire are going to get pitched away, and we're going to see if they can pick something else up. But, so far, pretty decent uh, openings on both sides. Yeah, I think a lot of this game comes down to, you know, which 
deck curves out better. Um, yeah, a lot of times we, we've seen in the past that mid range hunters can whip on their curve, and a lot of times in the past we've seen that zoo warlocks can also whip on their curve. So, uh, a lot of times hunters can curve out well, piece together a lot of damage, and close out the game with burn combined with like unleash the hounds, things of that nature. And sometimes zoo warlocks can just take a hold of the board and never let go, and hunters can't find a way back in it. Yeah. So it looks like both players or both teams are curving out reasonably well. Should have a pretty good fight in their hands. Yeah, what TJ's talking about mostly is that these decks thrive on those early game curves. When they have the strong openers, they can run away with games. But yeah. when, both, when both sides are trying to do that, it turns into an all-out slugfest for the minion battle very early on. And when that's happening, it, the game can snowball very easily in one, on one side. <laughs> I remember in the past, people used to think, well, when both hero powers are damaging one player, the player that they're damaging are going to be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> When, when, we that, when we only had... That's a Moger the Ogre! Oh, they're, they're, look, they're giggling! They're like... Dang it! Chad, did you put this in our deck before we, we queued up? They're hiding their their faces. They actually look surprised. I think Chad... If someone put that Moger the Ogre in their deck prior to this. Oh, man. They've, they've been trolled! <laughs> Well, Huffer's going to troll a little bit here, too. How far away is Worcester from Ohio State? They're actually pretty <laughs> close to each other. It's a hop, skip, and a jump away. <laughs> oh, no man. way for Wooster to take care of this Huffer. It's getting in eight points of damage. Yeah, they're going to cash in on that Haunter Creeper. Stranglethorn Tiger. Uh, I actually like that card a lot in Midrange Hunter. Uh, it's like a guaranteed five damage that's going somewhere. If you have Houndmasters, it gives you a guaranteed Houndmaster target at some point in the game, so... The big story here is how much damage Ohio State can actually push, given their board position. Now, here's the thing. That 4-1 has a target on its forehead, and there's two 1-1s on, on the other side of the board. So if they decide to push damage instead, they leave themselves vulnerable to just value trades on Wooster's side. So because of that, do they decide to take a, a more defensive stance? You know, given that they have Stranglethorn Tiger, that they have Dr. Boom, that they have Eaglehorn Bow with a trap, I think a defensive play is, is in order right now. Yeah. But, I mean, it's always terrible, you know, trying to trade into M-King bosses. It, it feels pretty bad, because it's so hard to deal with those cleanly. It's like a Harvest Golem. Yeah, but worse. Well, Captain's Parrot, uh, there are usually no pirates in uh, Hunter decks. This is no exception to that. And Wooster, meanwhile, Void Collar picked up. Ooh, that gives him really a lot pickup. of gas at the moment. Does Wooster disrespect the beast? They've making the right call here. If there was Houndmaster, you would have seen it last turn. Yeah. Uh, Ohio State does have a great way to follow this up, though. Eaglehorn Blow combined, Eaglehorn Bow combined with Freezing Trap. Uh, they can force that Void Caller to go into a Freezing Trap by uh, trading into the Spectral Spider. So, uh, rather increased chance of it. I mean, the New Ruby they can still get buffed here, but that's true. Yeah. Here's the thing. Like Direwolf Alpha. Akin to the Houndmaster, I think they would have been likely to already see a buff happen. Yeah. If Wooster had access to it. So both of these guys making some pretty darn good reads on where they need to focus uh, their cards at the moment. And now that this is when Ohio State is going to turn on the heat and hope to shut Wooster out of the game. Wooster is going to need something to fight back against this because this is a lot of damage that's coming over the next three turns. Yeah, it definitely is. And both times a start, it can you know stop some, some spells. But against Hunter, a lot of times uh, that's not too effective, especially going into turn six. You know that's Savannah High main. Is always something that you're looking out for. Yeah. They choose to not pop the freezing trap, and I like this. Uh, if they chose to go for it in this position, they were going to find themselves taking too much damage, losing that little bit of presence on the board. You know, they want to draw something to buff this Nerubian egg and take advantage of these bigger minions that they have sitting here already. So in the meantime, uh, they're going to hope that Ohio State just doesn't have a lot of strong plays to follow this up with. And unfortunately for them, they happen to have the best plays to follow it up with. Yeah. That's Dream Curve. Now, the one thing they are missing is utility. I mean, this hand is one direction. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Savannah High, I mean, I feel like it's automatic here. Well, th I just think they're considering, like, you know, maybe if they push and they, and they add the Stranglethorn Tiger, maybe that's a little bit better. You know, is weaving in the hero power at the pilot shredder, is that something similar? I still think this is the right way to do it. And because the Savannah Hyman, now you have a two-pronged attack going on. Number one, you're chipping away at their life, and you have a big minion they have to take care of. 
And that's a terrifying situation. Soulfire, that's a dead card here. Yeah. Is Mogur the Ogre a dead card? Oh, is, geez. This is actually kind of a blessing in disguise at the moment because, you know, say one of these attacks goes awry and it hits the Nerubian the egg Nerubian instead. Egg. Yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. It's being played. So here we go. Lothab going to take out the front half of this uh, Savannah High main. But that's a lot of damage they're staring down. Mogur the Ogre is going to hope to do work. Mogur hype! <laughs> I'm hype. Just all the attacks go through perfectly. Yeah, and he only like, disrupts oh, well. his own attacks. <laughs> <laughs> his attack goes into the 1-1. One, one. That's Hearthstone. That's Hearthstone. Mogur the Ogre, this guy's all of He's a really technical player. All about <laughs> nuance, strategy, precision. Maybe some scare tactics. Yeah. I don't think scare tactics work on Ogre. So, okay, let's not get to my personal life. I missed a line. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Ignore everything I said. Please don't tweet about it. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Well, <laughs> right direction. Hey, I mean, you can literally just point your stuff at anything because <laughs> there's an equal <laughs> chance that it'll go somewhere else. All right, that one landed. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> what is going on? I have never seen this happen before in my entire life. Oh, oh no. No. Oh, disaster. Moger lives. Yes, it does. Dr. Boom's going to come down, though. They have a big game hunter in that zoo deck. Yeah, but. <laughs> oh, man. This is incredible. I've never seen anything like this. Today has been the greatest day of competitive hearts that I have ever seen. Yeah. I am in agreement. And Ohio State is very confused. This zoo deck has Moger the Ogre and Big Game Hunter. Now, now, now here's the thing. Moger can force himself to attack incorrectly. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. Full four damage. They're even a soul fire. They want to trim as much damage as they can. Moger might have actually saved this game. I didn't think I'd ever say that. Yeah. Oh, I think... Uh, well, Hunter's Mark doesn't actually... <laughs> doesn't actually attack anything. Oh, but here's the thing. No. There's a chance that they still don't kill Moger. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're out of the water on that They got one. it. The gig's up. The jig is indeed up. So at this point, Ohio State, it's actually funny. They're fighting the attrition battle a little bit better. Uh, equal minion costs do not win Joust. So that is just a 3-2 at the moment. But they have Pilot to try to add behind this and a Hero Power. So the chipping away of health continues once again. Wooster's going to have to find a way to stave off this pressure. And with that hand, I'm not sure it's there. Yeah, and Ohio State, even with the 10 damage that they have staring on, on board, if you account for the Hero Power, well, that is could actually be a big deal. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So here's the Wooster staring down 10 damage at the moment. They have I, to survive this turn first. Yeah, I think they just have to take a risk here. They can't afford to do anything else. Ohio State's got minions to plow on the board. Not seeing the win here, TJ. Nah. Even with Malganus coming down this next turn, which it will, plus the Doom Guard, both could come down. It's still, I just don't think it's going to be enough. With the Stranglethorn Tiger on the board, um, and... <clears throat> They can even play the Pilot of Treasure here and be confident in, in um, them having enough damage to push through whatever okay. Wooster can throw I'm out. I'm thinking of a nightmare scenario here for Wooster, which is Void Collar runs in the Pilot of Treasure, spawns a Doomsayer, and they get the Doom Guard running the other Pilot of Treasure, and the whole board gets cleared. <laughs> they can't kill off the Void Collar now. That's that's true. They can't. Zero power minion. Wow, is this maybe enough to stay off another turn? It's not. Malganus nope. is dying no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, they're Wooster gonna it. Is well fought played. valiantly, but Ohio State, with just enough pressure, is going to stay this uh, I think you go for the Ram Wrangler. Well, of course you go for the Ram Wrangler. <laughs> is, this, is this a question? Yeah. They're trying. Oh, here we go. Just if you one can time, end it with please. a King Crush. Or a Silverback Patriot. Not quite. So Stranglethorn Tiger going to deliver that last five points of damage, and Ohio State has secured themselves a 4-0 record, which guarantees them a spot in the playoffs and a share of that hundred thousand dollars, a share, a 
sh shot at a share <laughs> of that hundred thousand dollars. That was a tongue twister. Yeah, Ohio State, uh, really great performance from them. Um, but I, I do want to commend Worcester for uh, there's some entertaining individuals. Yeah, I hope that uh, they do make the, the playoffs and. Uh, they, they only need one more win. They still have a 3-1 record, which is really great, and I hope we get to see them in the future. Put Moger the Ogre uh, get, getting in all their, <laughs> their horse masks and bathrobes. We've seen a lot of theatrics. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good, good, good stuff from them. Yeah, but once again, big congratulations to Ohio State. 4-0 uh, is a feat that nobody can scoff at, and uh, they join the other five teams that we've seen this week that, secure, that have secured their 4-0 spot. There it is on your screen. Yep, uh, Trinity College, they took 3-1 with three aggressive builds, including a Pirate Rogue <laughs> in there. George Mason secured a 3-0 victor victory with their uh, very slow and steady wins the race uh, style of play. They just want to play powerful decks and hope to get the job done. And Ohio State squeezes out game number five uh, in a long set with a lot of theatrics back and forth. And that's what I love to see. I hope, I hope we get to see more of those guys um, in the future. They've been having fantastic performance, but now they're playing for seeding trying to secure that big spot, maybe play against some other teams that squeaked by instead of the stronger performing ones. Yeah, they can sort of breed that sigh of relief 